Our word this week is holy. Uh, holy is often used in a negative way in our uh, language today. You may have heard the phrase holier than thou, which refers to a religious person who feels uh, superior to others around them. But when you look at how the Bible actually describes the way that we become holy, it takes away any reason that you would have to feel superior to uh, someone else. Um, holiness in the Bible is not something that only refers to living an upright and moral life. For example, when God appears to Moses, he tells him to take off his sandals because the place where he is standing is holy ground. Uh, the city of Jerusalem is referred to as the holy city. And that's not because there was something particularly special about that location or the people in that city, but because God chose to dwell there uh, with his people. And it's his presence that made it holy. It's the same thing for you and I today, that holiness is uh, more than just living a good life or trying to live a life that's better than other people. Holiness is something that we can't create from ourselves. We can't produce. It's something that has to be given to us uh, by God as a gift because he alone is holy. Thankfully, God is very generous with his holiness. He gives his holiness to us by connecting us to Jesus in faith. He gives us his holiness in things like baptism and communion. That's why we sometimes call those things holy baptism and holy communion, because it's there that God has promised to be present and to give us his gifts of forgiveness and, and holiness and grace. But maybe the best part about God's holiness is that it allows us, uh, you and I, sinful people though we are, to be comfortable in his presence. Uh, for without having that gift from him, that gift of holiness, we would never be able to feel at home in the presence of a pure and perfect holy God. But because he gives us his holiness in Jesus, we can enjoy our time with him and in his word.